What happens when you challenge a master exploiter with an impossible game? Can they beat it or is it the hardest game of all time? Well ladies and gentlemen, I am that master exploiter and today's impossible game is Heroes Hour, a newly released strategy game with AI that cheats harder than a Russian child in CSGO. Reviews for the game have of course been fantastic, except it has been bombarded by people saying the normal difficulty is impossible to beat. Well today we won't be playing on normal, we'll be playing on the hardcore plus difficulty with all of the current custom difficulty section turned up to maximum. It will be 5,000 times more difficult than the normal difficulty that you guys seem to be struggling with. Now this might be the Dark Souls of strategy games for some of you, but in the hands of a master exploiter who has naturally just drunk 75 cups of Yorkshire tea this morning, it's hopefully going to be a walk in the park. So make sure you're sat back, relax, with a nice warm cup of tea in hand and let's dive into this video. So it's time to begin a brand new game. Today we're going to be playing as Leon in against four impossible difficulty AIs. This is going to be incredible incredibly difficult for a normal human being. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, I'm British, so I am not at all a normal human being. Right, so let's begin this game. Now, as I said, this is the hardest difficulty we can possibly play on, meaning the AI is going to be given so many crazy bonuses, but also these starting monsters nearby to us have far more pops than they logically should. We also don't know how difficult a fight's going to be because the game doesn't tell us anymore. But yes, starting in this position, it is impossible for us to even consider taking our local gem mine because it's being guarded by effectively the entire US military industrial complex. There is no chance that Leon in here is able to take it. Using his army consisting of 8 disciples and 13 fighters, that is just simply too tall a task. Now you might be wondering who we're playing today. We're playing as this game's version of the Chinese Free Kingdoms era of history, which naturally means we've access to the most powerful and broken thing in the universe, the Tea House. Sadly, we can't build one for quite a while yet, but as soon as we can, we're gonna break the bloody game. Anyway, I'm going to do a slightly controversial strategy and leave a large amount of my army actually staying inside of our settlement and then I'm going to be taking our hero to go and try and take one of these areas. Now you might be thinking, Spiff, come on, this is the most difficult victory in the land. I know you're really good at breaking and exploiting games, but how can you possibly take over an entire mine guarded by a small army using just three of your worst units, which are effectively just peasants punching people with fists? Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I'm a god, which means I can do anything okay? Yes, the enemy army is much stronger and the game wants us to run away, but no, I have no fear. We're going to be having to fight against 30 pandas, 34 gunners, they've got 40 crows in reinforcements and a whole bunch of archers. This is going to be a ridiculously difficult fight, and with three dudes to do it, it's a guaranteed loss. However, using an enlightened battle strategy, we're going to do something very special. I like to call this mitosis. It's where you take just two things and make more things out of them, and as a result, we see a number go up. For example, if you want to see a number go up, you can like the video. You are now legally required to do that, of course. Anyway, we're going to take this fighter, hold down the left and right mouse button, and then just dump him into this little box next to him. This has turned the fighter from being three fighters into being five fighters via the process of mitosis. However, although on paper we still technically only have three fighters, but don't worry ladies and gentlemen, by repeatedly dropping the fighter into the box next to him, we're able to double him every time. Well bam, we now have 140 of these bad boys. That's still not going to be enough to actually win the fight. But there we go, thanks to human duplication strategies, with a now standing military of 12,776 fighters, we might just stand a chance here. So, let's begin the fight. Fighters lead the front line, let's go. And it's now fighters versus pandas. This is of course a tale as old as time in China and happens all of the time, apparently. I will of course send most of our fighters into the ranged back line as there's a good chance we could actually do a bit more damage than just punch pandas. Now our first wave of forces have sadly fallen, but don't worry, we can bring in the reinforcements. 73 more fighters ready to charge through the lines of pandas. They will fall, but that's their job. It's okay. Then another 73 on the bottom line, and we'll instruct these to rush into the archer line. Look at them go. Yes, we've killed all of the pandas. It's now just their range units, and then eventually they'll reinforce with birds. But until then, we hold the advantage. Ladies and gentlemen, we're doing it. This impossible fight is actually possible. All we had to do was dream. Dream and of course cheese and exploit the game into oblivion. That is how to truly be victorious, yes. And there we go ladies and gentlemen, a glorious first and total victory which naturally will generate us a huge amount of experience hopefully. And there we go, we've hit level 4 and we've captured a mine. Now many of you might be thinking, whoa Spiff, you have it in the bag. This game is now easy. Uh, it's not ladies and gentlemen. Remember, we're playing against an impossible AI. Just because I know how to exploit every game in existence doesn't mean we can now win. Because in order to win that fight, 
that we had to use up three of our very limited troops. Troops which we're actually limited by and we naturally need more of them. But we have a full seven days until we can reinforce our standing army. Which means that this is going to get increasingly more and more difficult. Especially when the AI starts sending its attack waves. And trust me, we have about two weeks before all hell breaks loose. And we're going to be wave assaulted by an endless swarm of impossible warriors. Now luckily, thanks to our dude's mastery skill, we've just summoned free fighters out of thin air. This is because we naturally drink large amounts of tea, meaning that we're a completely perfectly balanced and 100% not broken being. And what's this? We could get two units for free? <gasps> yes, please. And enemies that are struck by this creature have a chance of being turned into gold? <gasps> and then we can get gold from their corpses? Oh yes, please. We are going to so do a fight here. Now, in this fight, we're going to put all of our fighters into our reserves and instead start duplicating the child of Midas. We now have three, five, eight, twelve, 18, 27, 41, 54, 183, 373, and now 413 of them. This uh, should be enough to win the fight. So we're going to go send them into battle and hopefully we're going to massively crush the enemy and also turn them into gold. Oh yes, look at all of this lovely money we're going to be generating. Why fight your enemy when instead you can turn them into profit? Oh, it's glorious. And there we go, we win. We get all of this lovely money as well. Now here's the thing, we actually need more force if we're actually going to be able to survive, which means we need to build ourselves a tavern. This tavern is going to allow us to recruit an additional hero, which as you can imagine is going to be needed. Our hero today is going to be a panda. Um, fine, we'll recruit him. And immediately we're going to go send our panda to go and kill a whole bunch of crosswomen and take control of a mine. So let's start duplicating pandas. Now you might think we're off to a cracking start. We've got 8,000 gold in the bank. Our heroes are starting to level up, but no, we are incredibly weak. We can recruit only 23 units each week and those units are literally the worst thing in the universe. And so in order to save the amount of troops that we're losing in battle, I'm going to be building an infirmary so that way we can start getting back some of our dead troops. Some of the fights on this map are just downright ridiculous. There's almost 400 air spirits guarding this tiny hostage. Like, this is just a hell map. It is horrible. But hey, we have to try and fight. Otherwise, we're never going to survive. Anyway, time to start duplicating the peasants. Right, we finished week one and we head into week two, where enemies are starting to appear to us. In fact, we're even starting to get vaguely surrounded on all sides, but hey, we only have three choke points to defend and luckily three heroes to do it. And now, thanks to our latest investment, we have more power than ever before. Because we built the Pillar of Balance, now what does the Pillar of Balance do? Why, it allows us to make the greatest unit known to man. The Tea Knight, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it's fantastic. It's a dude with a tea leaf on his head wielding tea leaves. And this is what the peak British form looks like and it's what we are all eventually evolving into. It's perfect. But alongside that, we've also built the greatest building, the Tea House. Now the Tea House for this week is very good. Our first 500 power worth of units gain immortality, meaning they will always come back after the fight. And that's just from drinking one refreshing cup of Yorkshire tea from the Spivko mug. Now that's how to gain immortality. Anyway, I'm going to do this huge fight against 300 air elementals because uh, why not? I also discovered that these mercury units are kind of ridiculously broken and overpowered. Anyway, first before combat, we're going to drink our tea and then we're going to go into battle. Ah yes, these Mercury units are so ridiculously powerful, they're actually increasing in mass in this fight, which is uh, downright a little bit silly, but that's fine. I'm happy gaining an extra 84 of these ridiculously powerful units after every fight. Wow, that's 15,000 experience. Nice. Okay, we've just got our first glimpse of a proper enemy army. Now this is week two and this is a green army, which consists of potentially 100 crossbowmen, 100 spearmen, a whole bunch of high level knights and some wolves. This army would be impossible for us to beat at this stage in the game. Luckily, by mixing the immortality which we have access to, that grants the first 500 power worth of units immortality, it turns out when you duplicate units, those units stay. And consequently, we have a whole bunch of peasants now. We now have 197 of them in this army, which is just downright ridiculous. So this AI hopefully is actually going to leave us alone whilst we run for his land and pillage everything. Right. I'm going to demonstrate some troop duplication powers here. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the balance room. Now this unit, really, really good. It can even resurrect itself over and over again. Then we're going to make sure to drink this tea. And this tea is going to make sure that our lovely balancers are going to start duplicating because we only have eight of them. 
but these bad boys, they do a lot of damage. They have a lot of health. They're gonna come back from the dead. But more importantly, we're going to mitosis them from being just eight balancers into having, hopefully, a lot more. Yes, and as you can see, we're starting to duplicate them now. We're now up to gaining 12 balancers in this fight. 14, in fact, glorious. We only started with eight of these bad boys, and there we go, we're up to nine and 10. Fantastic, yes. Glorious, glorious mitosis. Effectively, this is an item duplication because people in this game are items, kind of. They're resources at least, okay? Just like interns, they don't have a say in life and I will constantly find ways to profit of them. There we go, we gained 96 of one of our strongest units just in that fight alone. Fantastic stuff. Okay, we're starting into the midpoint of week three and the uh, invasions are starting to become serious. We have two enemy AI armies marching towards our capital and it's entirely possible they can reach it by the end of the turn and we can't really defend it. We can only defend it with the units that we have there, which means that we need to bolster the defenses using one of our amazing cheaty mechanics. Now, we can hire mercenaries, which are horrifically expensive units. Alternatively, we can use our magical skills and mess about with the pillars of essence by combining words like hope, power and peace and by using all of this we can summon a creature what have we summoned seven orphidians fantastic now that's going to be useful but as we can see the enemy ai are starting to pump out armies at incredible degrees basically at the start of each week they summon a brand new army and that new army instantaneously gets a couple hundred extra units so hopefully they decide not to attack our capital this turn nope looks like they're going on the retreat fantastic right we're being attacked by one of the horrifically overpowered ai armies as you can see it's led by this level 12 dude who has an amazing quantity of stats but little does he know he's attacked us and I'm not going to duplicate my men because we have the balancers and we are going to feed the balancers demon tea which gives all units burning strikes and flaming attacks so let us chug the tea go into battle launch the attack and give all of our lovely soldiers a shield so that way their health is increased even more which of course stacks with their regeneration and look at them plow through the enemy my goodness they're just charging through they going to inflict some of the enemy units with blind so they just wander around and do nothing whilst the tea soldiers are marching gone go tea boys go and then i can cast a holy light to heal all of them to maximum health lovely go tea boys oh they're doing fantastic absolutely fantastic it's still getting rather close though so i'm actually gonna have to even summon in a whole bunch of peasants this is a very costly battle but this is largely because ao has got some very strong late game units like the war clown okay more likely the anarchist but still the war clown is intimidating oh my God, our army is actually starting to get massacred here. Oh no. All right, I guess we have to exploit our way. Quickly, start duplicating piggies. All right, glorious battle pigs, away you go. Now, sadly, this is the last of the pigs that we have. A final 41 pigs marching into the battlefield, and this is not looking good for us. We're completely out of units, and I think the AI might have it in the bag. Their mercurial units are just too ridiculously powerful. They're so strong, and they do so much damage for just being tiny little balls. Come on, piggies, you're doing great but I think this might be slightly too much for you. Goodness, we're down to just two pigs. Two single pigs. But they're doing it. There's one goblin. Oh my god, with two pigs! Two pigs we managed to clutch that fight. Dear lord, okay. Whoa. Maybe we do have a chug against this AI. <laughs> the armies they're raising now are just absolutely ridiculous. This army just got summoned in this turn. Look at it. 78 tiny little scampy goblins. We're now heading into the end game, ladies and gentlemen, where we're going to start seeing the literal apocalypse of warriors getting sent our way. Oh, Oh no, I've made a terrible mistake. I thought this army had units in it, but it doesn't. It actually just has these bodyguards, and these bodyguards can't be duplicated, uh, which means our poor little hero here is pretty much entirely by himself in this fight. Uh, he does have some spells. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Right, bird, straight into the back line. Let's see what we can do. This is not going to be a clean fight, and we're probably going to lose one of our heroes here. That's also going to open up our entire southern flank to the enemy. Oh dear, this is a total massacre. I'm sorry, men. Oh, I led you into a suicide side mission just walked straight through our gate okay luckily our hero survives and we'll get him back in one day's time but still he is definitely not as powerful as i was hoping for Okay, we're starting to see uh, the spiraling is beginning. The AI is amassing huge armies of hundreds and hundreds of units in single turns and then marching them to our border posts. Uh, we're losing pretty much all of our border posts every single turn, but luckily we have a panda here, a level 15 panda with a whole bunch of magic. Most importantly, over the last few weeks, we've been creating mercurial monsters out of our gigantic mercury surplus. And lo and behold, I'm pretty sure we can just defeat the enemy using these crazy mercurial monsters because they are 
absolutely ridiculous. Oh, but yes, first let us summon a huge amount of arrows onto the enemy. Yes, glorious damage. And our lovely mercurial monsters will hopefully absolutely massacre up the enemy army. Because these guys are ridiculously powerful. One thing we can even do is cast resurrection to bring them back to life. Actually, that was the enemy's units. Well, we've brought the enemy's units back to life to fight for us. Why not? <laughs> Oh god. But yes, the entire flow of battle is now flipping our way because these mercurial units, okay, they are good. They are far too good. In fact, they are ridiculously powerful. And I think this battle will be a total victory. Okay, now very annoyingly, ladies and gentlemen, we have just been attacked by the AI. They're a level 16 army. They've marched straight to our capital. And look at their army. It's bloody huge. Luckily, we have our defensive forces. Now, sadly, we can't duplicate them because we're defending in a giant siege fight. But hopefully, with our ranged fire, lancers here that do amazing damage and set enemies on fire we're going to be able to survive now this is going to be a bit of a rough fight we've got some fun magic we can even storm over and do some fun pushes look at this my bird boys yes rout you peasant enemies okay we're actually just going to send out our forces over the walls and do some fighting we've got our glorious t warriors look at those t boys go they're incredibly powerful they regenerate health and they're very difficult to die would you look at that ladies and gentlemen that's total glorious victory yes it was rather costly, but, but we did just defeat one of the amazing cheated in AI armies using our own, which is a good start. Okay, you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I think I can actually knock out the entire green player this turn. Uh, he has two heroes set outside his castle, so I'm thinking if we just chase him down with our larger army here, we should be able to get the victory. And here we go, these are the only defenders he has left after we've knocked out the heroes outside of his wall, and lo and behold, yes, we should be able to pretty much absolutely decimate them with our glorious ranged units. Yes, take that that impossibly difficult AI. I am perfectly balanced indeed. And this is how humanity falls. Lovely stuff. Ah, it's the end of the Green Empire and the rise of the T-Boys. And with that, they only have one hero remaining who is absolutely weak and pathetic. But hey, we have ourselves a brand new settlement and a whole bunch of money. Lovely. I'm also going to be able to recruit all of this faction's units because, of course, the AI kind of cheats and summons them in, which means when we conquer their settlements, we can actually just recruit for them. Them, which is absolutely wonderful. Next up, we're also going to try and send our panda to knock out the entirety of the yellow faction because uh, we managed to defeat them a few fights ago, and yes, they have just summoned a huge army, but luckily it's only been led by a level 4 hero, so I want to jump on top of him before you can trade it to one of their better heroes, maybe their level 9 one or their level 14 one. Either way, we're going to murder that guy. Now, he does get to hide behind the walls, and he will also get reinforced by his allies, but don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, we've got the Mercurial Slug monsters, and those bad boys are completely and utterly broken. They are pretty much the perfect unit, and we can also drink our pure tea to give ourselves a lovely modifier. And what I'm going to do is just buff all of my lovely mercury boys, look at them go, and then use the holy light to heal them all. Fantastic. Oh, they're just absolutely glorious monstrosities. Best of all, when they die, they don't actually die, they just split into two smaller versions of themselves, which makes them an absolute nightmare to murder in this game. They are pretty much unstoppable. Now the game for some reason still believes the AI is favoured in winning this, but little do they know that the Mercury monsters, they are all that we need. They just do so much damage, they're glorious. Look at them go, my Mercury boys, go! Do glorious things. And yes, the balance of power is now beginning to tip in our favour as the AI completely runs out of reinforcements. This is going to be a total and glorious victory. Fantastic! We even get to shape some new units afterwards, and thankfully we still have 84 Mercurial boys. Okay, now using the AI town, I decided to hire a mercenary army, and we're going to use Operation Suicidal Chaff Blocker, who's going to fight Talanak here. Oh my goodness, it's this person again. They're a level 17 spellcaster. They're a nightmare to fight against, but luckily, this is a mercenary army, so if we lose all of the units, it doesn't matter. They're just here to do damage, have a fun time, slow down the enemy a bit. It's perfect. So I'm going to charge my hero right into the center of combat. We're going to break through the walls, then I'm going to do a freedom call just to buff all of my dudes and let's try and destroy the enemy. Now, annoyingly the AI has access to these ranged deck gunners which are absolutely insanely overpowered. They are stupidly high value for money and now that they've just summoned 36 of them, this fight is now pretty much completely unwinnable. But don't worry, our goal is not to win, it is to do damage and damage is what we will do. We hired this army for just a couple thousand gold. If it dies, so be it. We can just hire another one next week. So we just want to rush our forces in and hopefully 
kill a few of their gunners, please? That would be fantastic if we could. Can you please stop dying, pathetic goblin monsters? Okay, right, yep, yeah, that's it. We're we're done for. The goblins are running away. They're fleeing from combat. And um, that is the end. Oh, well, we killed 141 deck mates, which, you know, I'll take. That's some damage done. The AI hopefully won't just immediately re-recruit them all next turn. It is entirely possible. But I'm going to hope that we did actually accomplish something today. Okay, now I've teleported my panda hero here to the other side of the map and luckily this means we're going to be able to knock out the green AI today using of course our amazingly super powerful mercury monsters that are just going to pretty much evaporate the enemy. I mean who thought giving them AoE attacks as well as melee attacks is a fair or good idea? It's not, they're just too powerful. Anyway, that was a complete and utter massacre. We murdered them all. Lovely stuff. There we go. We've also managed to capture the major fort leading into this red settlement that uh, they managed to retake from us. But hey, that's fine. Now we're just going to march on in and recapture this settlement for the second time. Once again, going to be quite a nice and easy fight. We can just use the Mercury boys. We can just send in 75 of them, watch as they bombard everything on the other side of the wall and take pretty much no damage in return. They can also just eat down the wall because they're fantastic melee combatant. They've got decent hit points and yet for some reason they're classed as an incredibly weak troop which means when you're affecting them with spells you can actually buff more of them anyway that's another settlement captured we sadly can't really do much here because we can't recruit again this week but don't worry we're starting to knock out the ai factions which is lovely yellow is gone green is about to be gone as well all that's left is the red and purple faction admittedly the purple faction is bloody terrifying but it's okay and anyway, i'm gonna go chase down this dude who has a whole bunch of mercury units because i mean come on i've got well over 150 designs disciples in this army, they're gonna do fantastic, hopefully. I mean, yes, he's got 28 Mercury monsters, but surely 28 Mercury monsters isn't that powerful, right? Please? <laughs> Please tell me this is going to be an okay fight. I just kind of have to knock this dude out because I can't have the AI be able to make Mercury monsters. They're just too powerful. Now, we've already taken a little bit of damage, but it's not too bad. Eight disciples lost, that's okay. Okay, we're now starting to take a lot of casualties very quickly, but that's fine. We can just bring in um, hopefully some reinforcements and oh, dear they've brought all of their mercury boys in um that's gonna be a problem those mercury monsters very very powerful because look at them they just keep duplicating it says there's only meant to be about six of them on the map there's very clearly about 40 of them look at those monsters and the issue is they're stupidly powerful and now they are aoeing my peasants to death oh my goodness this is gonna be a loss yeah this is a loss there's um absolutely nothing here i can do i can't duplicate these units because some of them are bodyguards and you can't duplicate bodyguards all you can do is sometimes accidentally lower the amount of units units you have by doing that. So I'm just going to have to send everyone in, except that even though we had a massively overwhelming advantage, uh, we've lost the entire battle. It doesn't exactly help that this dude can hardly cast any spells. But hey, that's a terrible defeat. I think the only redeeming advantage is that we've knocked out quite a few mercury units, which is good. So that's good value for money. Well, that was a devastating defeat. We lost pretty much our second largest army, but hey. Okay, a few turns later, that army, as you can see, is greatly diminished. So we could actually go after that red army, but instead we're sending Sending the panda up to capture the red capital city because it's vulnerable. They haven't got their largest military force here. And we've deliberately targeted the level 4 hero they have here rather than the level 14 one because the bloody level 14 one could probably massacre us. Anyway, we're naturally just going to send in a whole bunch of mercury units, but this time I have a little bit of a unique strategy which I think is going to do quite well. So basically, we're going to try and break down the wall, but first we're going to evolve our mercury monsters because by evolving them, they are going to become other units of an increased quality. And because they're very cheap units on paper, they're going to all be affected by the Evolve spell, which is going to give us a whole bunch of god tier units incredibly quickly. Oh, and also it's probably going to heal all of them, I reckon. Anyway, I'm also going to cast off Resurrection so we can just bring a few of them back to life. Now our fight for the Red Settlement is going incredibly well. I've just cast Rain of Frogs, which is like a one banner spell. And uh, all it does is it rains frogs in the sky. It's not the most useful strategic battle weapon, but I mean, you know, it's gonna help us capture the city at the end of the day. We can on paper say it was the frogs that did it, although in reality it was mostly the 140 mercury monsters that can just tank absolutely everything in this game. So there we go, we've captured the capital here. That's a glorious total victory. And there we go, the red faction has now just been vanquished by us knocking out their final hero down there, meaning we just have the purple faction to worry about. They are the only 
remaining impossibly difficult AI to beat. That's right, this was the maximum difficulty, but I am no normal gamer, ladies and gentlemen. I am the most British gamer, which naturally means uh, I have a few advantages because I know how to drink a lot of tea. For some reason, the green AI hasn't actually been knocked out of the game yet because they have that one hero lying around, but hey, we'll get them eventually. At the same time, I also want to go back and capture the main purple settlement because as you can see, that hero who we fought ages ago with a mercenary army, they've just completely improved themselves back up to normal. But luckily, we have a panda, and our panda is a battle panda, and a very, very strong battle panda, in fact. So we're going to send them straight up. We're going to start capturing these outposts using our silly, silly mercury units, and then we're going to push straight towards the purple capital. So there we go. Nice and easy victory. Okay, it is now time for us to take out the main enemy force here at the purple base. As you can see, they have a garbage level one hero, which um, we're going to choose to fight instead of the super powerful wizard because this way we get to fight the entire giga wizard's army without actually having to face that hero which is for me absolutely perfect anyway we're gonna summon some horrors in the back line actually no let's use evolve evolve is going to turn all of our mercury units into a hodgepodge mix of overpowered upgraded units this is perfect because mercury units they're really cheap so we're gonna get a whole bunch of modifiers i'm also gonna summon in some horrors in the back line and they're gonna start messing about with the ranged gunners that the ai has in the back because those bad boys stupidly powerful i don't want to see them firing at our front line i want to see them running away anyway the evolution has gone really really well our absolutely crazy mix of creatures has gone great we've got even more mercury units straight into the front lines lovely stuff look at them shred apart the enemy oh this has gone fantastically well ah oh, glorious glorious total victory ladies and gentlemen this is the way i like it and just like that that's the bulk of their armies dealt with they have one hero remaining this is the single hero our arch nemesis who up until this point has defeated us pretty much every time we fought them excluding the defensive capital siege this bad boy is stupidly powerful but this time this time they have no troops they have no overpowered units instead we are here and you are just a wizard which means you are pathetic and i shall blind you whilst i get very close to you with my range units and oh you you can summon units can you of course you can okay well that's that's annoying um, but oh you can summon more okay that is annoying i didn't exactly want to lose any units this time so i'm gonna cast salt blast which is gonna dissipate their summoned units instantly into the ground and there we go that's total glorious victory we've won and with that hero knocked out they only have one dude left level eight hero i don't think you're gonna do well little cop lacquer of rose tide you're gonna get a little bit massacred here sure you can summon some little arrows but um glorious total victory is mine we're gonna march into the settlement which is also ours all that is left is a single army of yours where is it where even is your army ah oh, there it is okay 36 peasant units are on a level four hero well i think we might have this one in the bag and what better way to do our final fight than use the mercury units of because they're just absolute god tier and of course we'll evolve them uh we're gonna get some weird hodgepodge units out of this like weird rat creatures weird wizards it's fantastic it's perfectly balanced and that's it we've won we've won ladies and gentlemen we have defeated every ai on the most difficult victory using of course a few cheeky exploits but um but i'm sure it was all completely intended by the developer we've done it ladies and gentlemen they said it couldn't be done they said you actually needed a strategy to win the game little did they know you just needed to drink tea and become the perfectly balanced being that we all can and if you want to be perfectly balanced you can like the video and perfectly balance my happiness but hey i hope you all enjoyed watching today's video as a special treat i've negotiated with GOG and the developers of the game to get a 20% discount off for just you guys as a pinned comment with a link which you can get the game from. It's the largest discount this game's probably going to be getting for quite a while so if you enjoy it you might as well pick it up. And heck if you don't enjoy it you've got 30 days to refund it which is a little bit better than Steam's. As always thank you very much for watching and be sure to hop on down to the comment section and tell me which impossible game I should try and beat next using perfectly balanced exploits of course. As always a huge thank you to each and every one of our amazing Patreons and YouTube channel members for making all of these videos all the more possible seriously thank you very much you lovely sausages and if you're sat there wondering what video you'd like to watch next well look no further than this one on screen now hand chosen by myself to be absolutely perfect for you anyway i'll see each and every one of you in the next one have a lovely day and goodbye for now